I'm going to go grab the second one. And I'm just going to data point in between each one. <clears throat> And then once you have all six, then we're going to go back to our view attributes and then change that to the RGB color. Um, and you do have to be in a top view to do this. Make sure I'm choosing the right one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, RGB. this during our break. I want, because I did it before, but just detach and reattach that in here. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. All right, so I'm going to do intensity first. And I'm going to go into colorize, use all point clouds, and select my raster. And then let's go up to a quick check, so make sure this works. Okay, there we go. <coughs> right, so then if I turn off that first raster, we'll just see what that looks like. Which I believe is this one here. Yep. So then it's going to colorize all those points for me. Um, going back to my point cloud settings, or uh, dialog here, this is also where you can set your, um, your GCS if you go to file, if you're not starting, we have to start with a pod file. So that's the only way we can kind of use this tool. So if you are bringing in any other type of format, um, like LAZ or any other type of point cloud, 
what you have to do first is you're going to attach it in here, but then you're going to convert it um, to a pod. And so, once I don't have one in here, but I would just, you know, go and select one of those other formats, and then it runs it through like a wizard for me to convert it to a pod, and that's where I would apply all the other settings to it. So in the training, they've already really done that for us. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here I could cover. Um, they do have a 3D line following, so if your um, if your point cloud is strong enough and you've got the density on like your edges of pavement, then it will go through. Um, so when you do the 3D line following, you're going to turn the intensity on that point cloud. And so if you have enough density, if you have enough points, a lot of times if you're getting this information from the USGS or somewhere, um, it's going to be very, uh, it's not going to be very accurate. So you're not going to be able to do that. But if you're actually flying this project and you have really good data, then you can do the 3D line following and it will actually grab the density and it'll, it'll follow the line work for you. So then you don't have to go in and draw it yourself first. Um, basically what you do is you go and select the starting point and it'll go as far as it can and then you'll, you know, every now and then you'll help it out and say, okay, go this direction. Kind of like when you're complexing and it, and it finds a fork, you're going to just choose which way to go with that. If I go in here um, and select my point cloud, this is how I can clip it. Right here, I can clip or delete a clip if I don't want that clip anymore. And so when you're clipping, um, you can choose it from a boundary or you can create a mask. So you, you want to probably do your fence first. Um, you can also use some of these others where you can just go in and create a block, a shape, um, or use an element. So if you were going to use the ground extraction, you're going to want to clip that point cloud first using that tool, and then you would go in and you would run your ground extraction here. All right, so we're going to switch over to our terrain file. So I'm going to go back into here. terrain model. So that's that same folder that you had on your desktop, the top left. So I found that idea folder. I'm going to open that up here. Go ahead and get my workbook open. Right. Just um, as a course overview, I'm going to go over that in a second. I'm going to have us go ahead and open up our file. Um, let me skip through here for a minute. We're going to be opening up the display terrain model.dgn. So if I go back into Open Roads, we're going to go to our Backstage area, which is that blue file tab. And then we're going to go and Browse, and you're going to go back a folder and get into the Using and Editing Terrain Models. And so here we're looking for Display Terrain Model. So in this file, we're going to be working, um, we're going to start by just reviewing the terrain features. Mike's covered here. And we'll look at the different display styles that you can use. Um, so what you're looking at here is the thematic height, uh, where it'll colorize your terrain model based off of your elevations. Um, then we're going to be creating a terrain model from graphical elements. and. We're going to do that manually, and then we'll look at the difference between manually versus using the filters. Uh, we'll look at how the rules affect your terrain model, depending on how you're going to create it. And then some of the editing tools that we have for terrains. And I believe at the end we're going to be complexing the terrains together. So we're going to end up with two separate terrain models that we're going to append together as one. Um, starting off 